Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lana and I like to make historically inspired costumes. This time I made Arwen's red slash blue dress or dying frock as it was known on the set of The Lord of the Rings. This is what was known in the wardrobe as Arwen's dying frock. The first time Liv put this dress on, it was a magic moment and has continued to be so. The costume really began with these two colours and once again constantly over dyeing these to get this aged red colour. And then we worked in this brocade. The girls in the wardrobe department have actually hand stitched all of this embroidery. Hours, hours and hours of work. Some of my subscribers have been asking for tips for costume making and while I'm far from a professional and I too learn as I go, I can certainly share what has worked for me so far. So let's use this video as an example and as an intro to costume making tips. And let's get this grey elephant out of the room first. This lace was supposed to be beige and what arrived was a letdown to say the least. But I'm on a budget, so my attitude pretty much has to be let's work with what we have and see if we can make it work. So as step one, I decided to dye this lace with coffee in order to get a darker color that will be less contrasted against the red of the sleeves. Arwen's brocade on the original dress is actually more brownish with threads of gold. And of course, I didn't want that in your face unnatural gold lace, but I did add gold embellishments, which you will see shortly. I dyed the lace twice and I did get a darker color. Still not what I wanted though, but better. Personally, I find that in cases like this, it's kind of like painting. You feel like it's not working, but as you keep on painting, eventually something starts to emerge. The transformation of this lace from this to the end product is honestly my favorite part of the dress. So yeah, the lace transformation journey continues, but let's move on to the dress first, mainly the blue overlayer. Like most people, I'm working on a budget with limited skills and access to fabrics, but one of my goals when recreating a movie costume is not to aim for a replica, since that's basically impossible, but rather to try and achieve something closely inspired by the original design. Here is what that might mean in practice. I had to make a compromise because I had limited quantities of this blue fabric, so I took some creative liberties and added two red godets, which add fullness to the bottom and also kind of visually elongate the sleeves when my hands are down, which I'm not too mad about. But there is one good thing about working with this cheaper velvet, it's stretchy. So that means it eliminates the need for closures, which is a big plus in my book since I hate adding closures on garments, especially zippers. Here I'm cutting out the lower part of the sleeves, very professionally, with a book to hold the pattern in place. I used the same pattern as I did for my Eowyn dress, though I did adapt it slightly to make the sleeves as wide as I could with the fabric that I had available. Still, they could be wider, but gotta work with what you have. Since I don't work with luxurious materials, I try to compensate for the lack of expensive fabrics and trims with some hand sewing, by adding texture and layers whenever applicable, and by trying to capture more so the essence of the dress instead of every single detail. Here is an example. For Arwen's upper sleeves, I used this darker, thinner velvet with a lovely embossed pattern that's going to give it some life, some texture. It looks kind of dark on camera, but in real life it's very complementary to the more vibrant red of the lower sleeves. I chose this fabric since Arwen's upper sleeves don't exactly have embroidery, but they do have something going on, as I said, so I wanted to build up that texture to achieve some sort of similar effect. Here's another tip. When making a costume, try to aim for layers, not a one-dimensional garment. Ideally, I would probably make two dresses here, a red underdress and a dark blue overdress. But realistically, that means a bunch more fabric and that's not really an option, so I went with the next best choice. Instead of a red underdress, I made a red under top with sleeves, plus the separate blue overlayer. I hand sewed the lace onto the upper sleeves, and I sewed all along the edges of every flower with a gold thread. But I really didn't want to overwhelm the red with this lace, so I trimmed the flowers down quite a lot, and that's also why I only added the flowers around the neckline and not onto the cap sleeves. But Arwen's dress does have the embroidery on the, or the brocade on the cap sleeves too. 
I also cut off this way too modern netting between the flowers so that I got a more organic look of the design. These leaves took forever, but I'm really happy with the results. Even though the color is still not great, I think the overall look, especially the transformation of the lace, is a massive improvement and it has the look of real embroidery. It looks really cool to me. I'm just showing you how the sleeve should ultimately look like. There's this gold trim that will go on and it matches the gold thread that was used to sew on the lace. Now the neckline. This wide, dark trim is added to the blue part of the dress. It's got three layers to reinforce it, and since I couldn't recreate the embroidery on Arwen's original dress perfectly, I decided to give it texture with these little macrame leaves and to give it a sort of look of a faux brocade. If you want a tutorial on how to make these leaves, I recommend a bunch of great macrame tutorials right here on YouTube. Mine is awful since this cushion is basically the same color as the ties, so I won't bore you with it, but essentially you keep making a series of knots until they start resembling a little leaf. You make as many as you need or want and you arrange them onto the dress. I added a few gold stitches on the dark red fabric too and then I attached a red lining to it, right sides together, turned it over and then all I had to do was attach it to the blue dress. These lower sleeves are lined and let me tell you, they are heavy. Lining them was sort of a last minute decision, but I sewed the lining on in such a way so that I get a clean inner edge here. That's because the seam of the lining is at the top, so hidden from view. Here are the sleeves on their own, just pinned onto a plain black shirt. I really like how they turned out, I think they're quite recognizable even though they're not an exact replica and they really make you feel nice when you're wearing them so that's always a plus. I didn't film everything but at the end I attached the sleeves to the red top layer, added the trim and ultimately I did sew the blue dress to the red top just around the neckline to make the whole thing more compact but visually it still looks like there are two layers and technically there are. And yeah, it would have been better if the dress was wider at the bottom and had a train, but maybe that's a challenge for a future me who tries to sew this again to make up for the shortcomings this time around. Still, this dress was a fun project and a learning experience, and it got me out of my 18th century comfort zone, so I'm pretty happy with the imperfect finished product. I hope this video inspired you to get creative too. Now, feel free to roast this dress like I roast movie costumes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.